going on, everyone? Welcome to Decred in Depth. I'm your host, Angelo, and we got DCR Roundup with my boys, you know, Promo Nino and Checkmate. What's going on, gentlemen? Oh, man, it's good to be here. I always love being on uh, Decred in Depth. The intro always gets me pumped up. Yeah, good to be back. It's uh, I th- feel like it's been a minute since we did the uh, the Decred Roundup, so uh, I'm excited to get uh, get stuck in and start uh, talking some Decred again. Purely Decred, you know, on a uh, Rough consensus, we chop it up on a, on a bunch of different topics, but uh, it's good to be on Decred Roundup and just talk pure Decred for a second. Yeah, of course. Well, let's start off. You know, we can't ignore the elephant in the room, even though on Rough Consensus, we, we, we dive into this topic. But how are you gentlemen feeling about what's going on economically worldwide? I think it's a, I mean, for me, it, it's a very, very interesting time. And I think, I, I thought Jake's piece was really, really poignant and that it just breaks down at the core that there is a there is a rigged game at the core of all of this. And I think everyone's now seeing that. And by everyone, I think much, much broader than the, the crypto market. Um, in general, the crypto market has always been fairly skeptical of monetary policy and central banking and things like that. And what I think the current... Uh, economic climate has done, um, you know, with trillions of dollars of stimulus and, you know, people suddenly realizing that money just can be created out of thin air. It's almost like the veil has been pulled. And, you know, I, I think that's a really fascinating transition that we're starting to see is that all of the cogs and the machines and the way it actually works and, you know, some of the elements of that that really are very unfair to the average person is starting to bubble up in things like social unrest and, um, and different parts of the economy. And, and in general, people are fairly displeased with the way things are working. And I think that really is the core about why Bitcoin came to be. I think it's the reason why cryptocurrencies are in the right place at the right time. And, you know, I, I, it become, comes down to awareness and people becoming cognizant of what's actually going on. So it's a fascinating time, but there's certainly some challenges that we're all, all going through. Yeah. And, you know, to, to add on to some of those points, you know, we talked about this in a private chat. Cash is trash now. Right. Um, I think a lot of people are thinking, uh, you know, deflation, then inflation. I think at this point, I'm starting to think just in, like maybe we had some quick deflation at the beginning of the pandemic. But pandemics, from what it seems like, because of the supply side getting chopped up on a bunch of different things, they seem to be and with the money printing that goes the easy money that comes with it. It seems to be that the, you know, pandemics are relatively inflationary events, right? Which is always beneficial to hard capped, um, hard capped assets like, you know, gold, Bitcoin, Decred. Um, and I think, you know, further to hit on some of Checkmate's points, you know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, I think going, going into all of this, you know, people are willing to like let things be, even though a lot of people were like slowly becoming more and more unhappy and people are made aware of the, uh, the inequality that was like slowly like increasing um, throughout the world. And it's becoming more obvious just because of social media. Right. So it's so much more transparent over time that, uh, you know, this thing was basically just the straw that broke the camel's back. And I think everything that's going on right now is hyper bullish crypto. And I don't really consider it much of a coincidence that obviously we already had this long bear market that was drawn out with Bitcoin and obviously all coins, including Decred. Um, it doesn't surprise me that uh, we were that we're, we're recovering in the thick of all of this because just on a, on a fundamental basis, it, everything that's going on is hyper bullish cryptocurrencies, and it makes a ton of sense that people now that they've, as Chuck would say, like the veil's been you know removed, and everybody's starting to be acutely aware of what's going on. You know, cash is trash, and all this different stuff going on. It's adding on to the fact that you know crypto's already been in a prolonged bear market, right? Like the S and P just had its blow off top. Um, and you know, it's recovering right now and it's close to the highs again, but you know, it, there's a lot of like, uh, there's a lot of strong undercurrent pushing, um, the cryptocurrency markets in the right direction. And I think in the end it'll be, you know, um, bullish decred when it's all said and done. Understood. Now, I I know we spoke back in our chats maybe like two weeks ago and I had linked you guys to an article or I think it was just a, I think it was actually a Twitter post, not necessarily an article. Um, and I actually forgot the person's name, but they they stated that the oldest millennial right now is about 39 years old, and the boomers at that age controlled 21% of the wealth. Millennials right now control 3% of global wealth. That's a huge separation. Um, Check, you said that you don't see that affecting 
crypto or CCs in the future. If millennials are the main generational group that's driving CCs and boomers are obviously not buying the product, how do you see the growth happening? Because you said it, it's not going to take much to move these markets, but I just wanted to get your take on that. Yes, I mean, I guess at the core, your question is where does the money come from to actually push this thing higher? And I think at the end of the day, you, your point is, is is correct, right? There is a significant wealth disparity between uh, the boomer generation in particular and the millennials. And coupled with that, and, you know, on our last pod with uh, with Amar, he really touched on this. There is a, there's a knowledge gap, right? There's a, a disconnect between boomers and cryptocurrency and uh, millennials and, and younger generations with things like, you know, even gold, right? Traditional assets there's and bonds and things like that. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people who are, you know, coming into adulthood now, coming into the workforce, um, starting to accumulate wealth um, or, you know, partway through their, their beginning of their careers, um, they're looking at things like they've grown up and they've seen nothing but bonds at, at almost negative yields, um, if not negative in real terms. So that safe haven trade kind of disappears. And if you compare that to when the boomers were at the same age, you know, those bonds were yielding 15 16%. So, you know, you could just park money in there and it would be happy days. Um, we've also got a, a stock market, which is purely volatility at the moment. So, um, yes, we're seeing a lot of this momentum into the Robin Hood side of things. And, you know, there's, there's different views on how much that's actually moving the market. But it's now at a point where they're saying, you know, normally retail is kind of this secondary sideline character that, you know, there is money there, but really they, they need to be in a large volume to actually uh, push markets around. Um, and, you know, a lot of the smartest guys in the room are saying that, Robin Hood traders are not necessarily moving markets, but they are now actually a non-zero force, something that is genuinely moving um, markets. You know, they're saying that there's something like 20, 25% of some of the, the actual volume that's going on, which is substantially higher than what we're used to, uh, what markets are used to. And when you convert, when you take that, that knowledge gap or that difference in opinion, the fact that people are growing up, coming into the workforce, coming into wealth in a world that is you know, exposed to have levels of corruption, levels of um, unfair distribution and mechanisms, bonds that yield negative, uh, you know, negative yields. There's kind of no safe haven anymore. When you come into the world with that as your baseline reference, and then you see what cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Decred are really building, something that is apolitical, right? Something that is separated from this human governance structure that is clearly not working for the majority. When you see things like hard cap supply, when you see things like digital, I, you know, I was even talking to um, uh, people the other day about trying to, you know, sell shares, move it to a different account to then rebuy, things like that. And you've got your two to, your two day settlement time, then you've got your three day bank transfer time, then you've got to move it into another account. That whole process is insignificant compared, like it's it's massive compared to a, a Bitcoin transaction at ten minutes or a Decred transaction in uh, in five. So you've suddenly got this. Um, disparity between the, what the technology is delivering and there's a lot of naysayers in the traditional world and when you actually compare them apples to apples, I mean, I, I would consider myself now crypto native and quite frankly, I can't go back to the original system. It's just so slow. It's, it, it, it's, it doesn't actually serve my needs. And when you combine all of that together, combined with thin order books, which you know, cryptocurrencies being fixed supply are thin, you really don't need that much attention. I mean, look at the Dogecoin move the other day, right? That's just a, a TikTok meme that's going around the internet. Um, so, you know, I think that you don't need much money and price is the best marketer. As the thing moves up, more people come in. That's It becomes a self-repeating cycle, which is why we see these logarithmic price moves. Yeah, yeah I think Check basically hit the nail on the head with that. So I'll, I'll add a few points. Um the number one thing is that, you know, obviously the, the boomers do not and probably will never understand cryptocurrencies, nor do I really think, you know, based on, you know, the, uh, they're, they're much shorter time, pre time preference than we are, right? They don't have as many years and stuff like that to wait out for something like this to like finally pop, right? So it actually makes a ton of sense from like a logical standpoint that they're not going to jump on the train, nor should we really expect them to. But I think one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, um, uh, obviously I don't wish this upon anybody, but obviously when the older generations start passing, um, they're going to be passing their wealth down to younger generations, right. That are more, um, more crypto native, more technology native. So that's something to keep in mind when it comes to like money flows over time. And then, um, 
the other thing that check also i think check kind of alluded to this a little bit is that you know uh, cryptocurrencies especially hard cap supply currencies you know they get the crunch from both sides right they get the uh they get the demand side from just people coming in new buyers coming in to to prop up the price and then they also have the supply side crunching with less new new supply coming onto the market so you know they're they're naturally designed to actually pump um the pump fundamentals of cryptocurrencies are really strong compared to any other asset on the planet which you know, that's one of the chief innovations that they have. That's like a, a, a core piece of their bootstrapping mechanism over time. So, you know, all things considered, um, I think uh, that uh, gap in wealth, uh, that, that wealth inequality gap um, that's kind of played out over the years as a function of, you know, likely, you know, just infl- the inflationary regime that we've lived under, um, that gap, will, I think, will, will normalize. And also, I guess one more extra point is that, um, now that we're in times of volatility, um, this is like a line from Batman, but like, you know, cryptocurrencies were quote unquote born in the darkness. Like now that we're in the times of chaos, like cryptocurrencies thrive on chaos, you know, like cryptocurrency markets have always been insanely volatile. So now that like, uh, you know, traditional markets are back on equal, like kind of on equal footing now with cryptocurrencies with so much, in, uh, so much uncertainty overhanging everything, it's, uh, it should be really interesting to see how things play out over the long haul. Um, but yeah. That, that's it for me. Check. Uh, what do you see DCR and its model fitting into everything that's going on? I mean, you know, to me, DCR stands as one of the most unique projects in the space. And I think something that is going to be a, an interesting and a challenge for, for the project, but um, in general, there's a lot of hype out there. And I think the, the, the honest truth is a lot of people don't really think too much beyond the surface level when it comes to this kind of stuff. And there's a few layers to that, right? It, one, cryptocurrencies in general are complex on their technological front. Um, the underlying economics and the reason that we're all kind of here, the self-sovereignty, the the reason that one project is, you know, has um, has benefits over another, or you know, trade-offs and things like that, they're all quite complex topics, and it's difficult for people to get their head around it, which is understandable, right? There's only so much time in a day. And, um, you know, that's really where education is a powerful side to all of this. Um, for Decred, it does, you know, it, it is competing within a an environment of lots of shiny things. It's competing in an environment where, um, you know, there is this kind of volatility going on on both sides. And, you know, as with a lot of things, price is the best marketing. So where I kind of see Decred fitting in is that, you know, when I look forward and I think about, you know, six months, 12 months, years down the line. And I think about what projects we actually have in the marketplace. And and my my depth gauge for things is, would I use it? And, you know, I, I've experimented with quite a number of different projects out in the cryptocurrency market for the sole purpose to actually make an educated decision on these things. And what I, you know, over, over the years that I've been looking at this thing, I keep narrowing down to what would I actually use? And what I find is there's a lot of shiny things. It's innovative. It's fun. It's interesting. But I would never actually use them in the real world. And when I project it forward, there's a lot of these projects that don't quite fit into a um, – do they compete with Bitcoin? Are they going to outlast? Do they have a sustainable mechanism? Are the values aligned? And I guess at the end of the day, it comes down to the incentives. Are the incentives aligned such that the product that has been developed – will outlast and will support a global economy as a monetary asset. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer that I think money is the core thing that blockchain solves. Uh, it's it, that, that ability to withstand uh, centralized attack vectors is, I think, woefully underappreciated. And I think very few projects do it well. And when I combine all of these different elements together, and it, it's why, you know, the, the, the built to last um, – uh, call for Decred, I think is really, really poignant because it is a project that's built to outlast pretty much everything else. It's sustainably funded. Uh, you know, the thing has got the security element that is extremely hard to attack in a logistical environment. The monetary policy is sound. And I think, to be perfectly honest, if I'm going to boil all the things that make me the most bullish about Decred, it's the hodler base. And what, you know, what I really enjoy about looking at uh, the on-chain metrics and the ticket models and, um, you know, even, uh, starting to look more at hash rate and things like that, when you combine all the different elements of who actually participates in the Decred network, 
there is a solid foundation of people who understand and get the project. And you can see this with the work that Richard Red did when you look at how many contractors actually sell their coins. They're actually selling a small portion, right? They're covering the costs and the rest of them either sit, sit stationary in a cold, cold wallet um, or go straight into tickets. Um, and I think, you know, and, and similar with miners, right? There's, there's a propensity to actually hold decred. And at the end of the day, the stronger that hodler base is, the, the more sound it is to then progress to the next level. And I, I know that Decred is there to last. I think it is such a well-designed project, and I think the incentives are so well aligned that, yes, it can take time, but I think that that core foundation is really going to springboard onto great things. And, you know, this is why I, I really spend the time to look at the data because this is what you start to see. The momentum is starting to shift. Um, I think it's in the right place at the right time. Um, and you know, I, I really think that the that solid foundation of hodlers is what it's all about. Yeah, for for my two cents on all of this, I, I think one thing that people overlook a lot and really don't realize to, to Chuck's point, like he said, um, the best use case of uh, a high assurance uh, you know accounting system, which a blockchain is, is money, right? Uh, a trust a trustless money or a trust minimized money. And when you look around in the cryptocurrency space, there's really not a lot of coins that are competing for this space. When you look, when you look at like coin market cap, like the top 100, there's no coins competing. Who is it? Bitcoin, Decred, Zcash, Monero. Uh, you could count the two Bitcoin, Bitcoin forks, but I mean, they're trash, right? So like they're not even competitive. Like other than that, like there's nothing else, right? So it's really bizarre how the biggest, uh, I guess Ethereum is too. Some, some people in the Ethereum community argue that it's not trying to be money or not. I think the end goal is that it should try to be money um, because that's the most valuable use case for this stuff. But, you know, when you think about the amount of competitors that are going, it's arguably the largest um, um, competitive space. Most value that's going to be brought out of the space is just the money space. Right. But there's not that many things competing for that specific thing. Right. So when you really start to think about it, it, you know, Decred's actually competing in a very small pool of things going after a huge market. Um, so that makes me incredibly bullish on Decred over the long haul. And then another thing that a lot of people don't realize, um, I can't remember if we'd said this in private chats or on rough consensus, is that on a pound for pound basis, each, each for each dollar that the market cap goes up, Decred's fundamentals um, boost substantially higher than any other cryptocurrency network, um, that, right? Because it has the treasury, it, it becomes more self-fundable in the future. Um, it becomes more secure from a POW and proof of stake perspective. Um, and I think, you know, one thing that people really don't realize with Decred is that um, I've tweeted about this recently is that I think from a macro perspective, there, there's a recovery going on, at least from on chain, from a, you know, a staking and mining perspective. And then another thing is that people don't realize the relative scarcity that um, of coins now compared to the market top. So I think uh, I published a, a, some charts about the, the cost of tickets um, throughout Decred's lifetime on a USD basis. And on a USD basis, the cost of a ticket, I think, is only down 75% from the all-time highs, whereas the actual U DCR USD price is down close to 90% or something like that. Um, so, you know, that's a function of, you know, added, you know, scarcity to the system, right? There's a lot more DCR uh, percentage of supply locked up in tickets compared to what there's been historically. So I think it's one of those things that once you knock over one domino for Decred, um, I think there'll be a rocket ship type effect. Um, I've, I've said this a couple of times to a few people that I think Decred is one of those coins that because of the, the staking and lockup and the, the strong hodler base that the network has, it tend, it's going to be one of those coins that, in my opinion, obviously this is not like uh, canon or anything, but um, it's going to be one of those coins that over time, it tends to actually uh, take the elevator up and stairs down as opposed to the other way around, which people are used to. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure everybody's knows the Decred bleed out in the bear market was really slow and prolonged. Right. Whereas the run up was like insanely quick and, you know, it was sharp. Um, so yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, you just need to be patient and, you know, with all the, all the things coming out on the horizon for Decred, um, it's just a matter of time before it starts eating a bigger chunk of the, of the money space in people's minds and wallets. And I think just to kind of add one last point on that, you, you mentioned things like, you know, the features and the elements that are coming out. And I think, Again, this is why it's such an amazing uh, project to observe and kind of watch because it's, it's, it's a hedge down and build type project. And when you look at some of the issues that these cryptocurrencies are going to come into, you know, we saw actually today that um, I think there was a, a, a USDC, so one of the stable coins, um, recently had a blacklist uh, on one of the addresses, 100,000 USDC that's now been blacklisted. 
um, by the the administrators. And you know things like privacy. We're going to see Bitcoin start having issues with privacy. So there's there's issues with centralization. There's issues with um, as these projects get entwined with the financial systems, you start seeing increasing surveillance. We saw that chain analysis is now. Uh, I think they're now. I was going to say supporting. I'm not sure that's the right lingo, but supporting Dash and Zcash. Um, and what they're finding is that a lot of the transactions are quite, quite um, trivial to audit and uh, and trace. So the, the privacy functions are not actually working as um, as you would expect. Well, the anonymity sets get compromised. Um, you know, Bitcoin's going to run into things like fees. You know, Ethereum's running into things like fees. And you know, wh- whilst fees are a positive thing, um, they do make it more difficult for people to use the technology. And it is a deterrent. And what we'll find is that that will actually be part of the overflow mechanism that that bleeds into other alts, right? And um, Nino, I think you've mentioned before that that Decred being it's the high assurance layer that it is, can actually function as a settlement layer adjacent to Bitcoin. And, you know, I've often talked about Decred as being both a competitor, but it also is a complementary system. Um, and I stand by that. I really think there's a lot of elements of Decred that complement Bitcoin, um, as the as as the front runner, but the, you know, and you know, I think Willie Wu said in the past that um, if there was another project that has the actual capacity to um, to take over if Bitcoin was to fail, then you know, my money would certainly be on Decred to do that because it has the bones to actually achieve that, and it's that self upgrading system that um, is so powerful. So I think what a lot of projects are going to do, they're going to run into these issues of governance. We're gonna, they're going to run into issues of centralization. Um, there is going to be, I, I believe, more regulatory pressure. Uh, I don't think they're going to sit on their hands like they did in 2017. I think they're now savvy to this and they, they probably are going to be making moves much sooner, faster and harder. So that decentralization element is important, which Decred is, is pushing towards with the Treasury, the privacy element. So there's a lot of things that Decred has the bones for. And it's got a really, really sound foundation of technology and, and holders that actually positions it extremely well to deal with. And I think I've mentioned this on uh, on Rough Consensus in the past. We will start seeing projects um, get taken down by any one of those mechanisms. Um, and, you know, the market can be slow to react to those things because there's, there's money at stake um, and incentives and things like that. But I do believe that it has the, the technological adaptation available um, uh, potential to actually exceed in the face of other projects discovering issues that they're potentially not prepared for. So um, I think that's a key element to be uh, on the lookout for as well. Yeah, and, there's, and also, sorry, one, one more thing is that I think, uh, uh, Chuck, you, you really hit on something that I wanted to just you know follow up a little bit on is that you're comparing Decred to a bunch of different projects. And when you really start to think about it, Decred takes a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that's missing in other projects and lumps it on to uh, you know, a scarce um, a scarce asset, right? You know, with Bitcoin, the biggest issue that people always talk about is utility, right? Decred has utility baked into hodling, right? That's genius. Um, when you talk about Bitcoin having issues with fees, Decred can probably survive on a smaller fee market in the future, right? Um, when you talk about ETH, it has blockchain bloat, but you can't get uh, utility without, blo- uh, you can't get that quote unquote utility without blockchain bloat. Whereas Decred just decides to focus on a few strong use cases and no- uses its block space more, uh, with more discretion, right? So when you start to really look around, Decred's filling a lot of gaps. And I think um, one thing that is not talked about enough, and we know this from firsthand experience, that there's a lot of quiet Decred bulls on the sidelines. A lot of people want to buy strength on this thing. Um, You know, it's just been a long bear market. Um, So, you know, the same thing happens with Bitcoin. You know, like a lot of people, everybody wants to buy something that's going up. Um, And I think there's a lot, a lot of quiet uh, money on the sidelines waiting to buy strong Decred. Um, So, yeah. That, that's another thing to consider as well. Understood. Now, gentlemen, both of your proposals passed recently, so congratulations on that. Uh, Check. you want to discuss your proposal? And I know you're working with some, with some contractors that you put together to help you design and, and build the site. But if you want to go ahead and elaborate on that, it would be great. Yeah, most definitely. So, I mean, at, at the end of the day, I think my role in the whole thing is just kind of overseeing it. Um, I, I'm certainly taking a uh, more of a back seat because the team that we've got um, uh, working on this thing is, uh, you know, they're excellent. And, you know, I'm, I'm watching them in the chat and there's there's so much going on. The the designs are starting to come together for this charting website. Um, you know, the, the, the coding's going on in the background. Um, so Pavel's working on that. To be honest, I'm really, really excited um, for these guys to bring – 
the you know the charts that Nino and I have been looking at to the Decred community, I feel like it will it will create something that's tangible, and you know some of the, the some of the work we do, and, and I you know I totally get it. There's there's elements of it that take time to get your head around, and even even myself, I'll go back and look at some of the the charts and models that we've developed, and it takes time to really distill down the information, understand what it's really telling you, and it's kind of after you, you, you've it's you know it's a process of rinse and repeat. You've got to do this multiple times. You've got to look at multiple chains. And you start to develop a picture about how the fundamentals of these networks work. Um, so that whole thing, it does take time. And it's especially difficult when we'll post up a chart and people will, you know, that there's engagement and people look at it and people like to see the, the research and the studies. But there's another layer to actually saying, okay, and now here it is for you to actually use and observe. So there's a number of reasons why I think this is important for the project. Um, the first one is, is A, it makes the work that we're doing tangible and, and accessible. Um, I, I think Decred as a governance-focused um, project, right, it, it really is – it's so critical that stakeholders can make good decisions based on sound information. And the on-chain signals really do distill that information into a – a concise package and Nino you've said in the past that on-chain data is expensive to create the prints that go on there you can't really fake them without you know spending the transaction fee without moving the value or without hashing right or buying the ticket or whatever the action is there's no other way to do that you can't achieve it without doing the action so there's a lot of dense information packed into each one of those bytes so by distilling all that information and presenting it in in, in these chart formats it gives stakeholders something that they a tool that they can actually use to assess: Are we getting the adoption that we we wanted? Right? Are we seeing? You know, let's say we build a, a layer of technology or we implement a new marketing program or whatever it is. On chain data can actually give us: Are we seeing an uptick in transactions? Are we seeing an uptick in privacy mixing? Um, are we seeing more momentum from the ticket side? We can actually start to assess all of these things um, in real time. So it's an information layer, a sound information layer for stakeholders. Um, there's another layer of it where there are signals there that can actually help people enter and exit Decred uh, as a trading vehicle. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, market infrastructure and trading is part of this whole mix, right? This is this is how monetary assets uh, progress. We're seeing this even in the gold market, right? Um, the gold market is really adhering to a lot of technical patterns, and there's a lot more trading interest in the in the pet rock, right? So, um, all of these commodity type assets they need price discovery, and the on chain signals are extremely high value. Um, so, you know, there is a benefit there of if there's you know high alpha that can be actually pulled out of um, understanding the on chain flows and movements of Decred. There is an attraction point for people who are looking to trade with size to actually start using those signals and generating that natural liquidity, because there's a uh, you know there there are more or less um, signals and information that can be discerned from this data. So th there's a liquidity layer, there's an information layer, and then the last one, which I'm really excited about, is the community just. It seems to really grasp and engage it. The visual side of the charts, the information that's packed into them, and people love to learn, right? That's that's and certainly why I do what I do. I love to learn, and I love trying to pass on whatever I can to whoever wants to listen, right? And I think this is a great way for people to actually start, you know, posting charts. I'd love to see some of these things show up on uh, on socials um, where people start dissecting their own analyses. And what I'm really looking forward to is you know, people will get some really good analyses and then people will interpret things slightly off-center, which could very well be a whole new interpretation. Um, or it could be something that we can actually then steer back in the, in the direction of the fundamentals, right? So there's a process of um, community engagement and you know, collective learning. And to me, that's, that's a really exciting element. It's about understanding the core of Degrade and what it's all about. So um, you know, that's, that's really what, it's, uh, what that proposal is looking to do. It's bringing those up to a, a live site um, the model is supposed to be a modular system. So once we get the first five charts up, um, the idea is it will be easy for us to iterate and um, you know reproduce new charts. So the idea is that once we get the bones set up, um, you know whether it be via future proposals or if it's simple enough, we can basically just as we produce these charts, um, implement them straight into the uh, into the website. So um, that's really the plan: is to build a, a, a solid baseline, and then we can iterate and, and add modules as we go. Um, and one thing that I'll certainly be looking to do is create some, you know, short five-minute, maybe less video explainers. So for each metric, 
Um, there'll be a short blurb that kind of describes how to use it. Um, then there'll be, you know, links to the, the, the research papers and that education hub side of things. Um, and what I'd also like to put in there is a little video explainer because I know that audio and visual and, and things like that are a, um, you know, a useful tool for people to kind of get it into their minds. Um, and they could certainly be hosted as little short, um, uh, what are they called, like webinar type things to get people engaged and stuff like that. So um, that'll certainly be uh, one of my key contributions to it. But really excited with the progress and uh, looking forward to seeing it go live. Yeah, excellent. It looks it looks exciting. Most definitely. Nino, I know, I know you're working with him on that as well, but um, you have a proposal of your own that, that was passed. So what do you got lined up for the next couple of months? Yeah, well, let me let me touch on checks, uh, checking the, the rest of the team's work that's going on to the, the DCR on-chain website. And, you know, what really gets me excited about that is that it's a central repository, right? Every Like all this stuff is scattered all over the place. So now, you know, when this website gets built, you know, you can go find this all in one location. You don't have to go like to different links on Medium or you don't have to like, you know, nudge us on Twitter to be like, hey, can I see the chart, right? You can just show, you just type in the website and you go and just check out whatever chart you want to. And then, you know, kind of on board with the whole open source ethos, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, me and Check are just, you know, two guys who are just, you know, on the front end of an early, you know, young project, helping it bootstrap. We we're trying to like, you know, s- spread information, help educate everybody on the direction of the project from an on-chain prints perspective. And, but the end of the day, the end goal is that for everybody to be equally educated on this stuff, right? So that way you don't have to refer to a few people that are like considered quote unquote subject matter experts on this stuff, right? That way we're all kind of like on equal footing. And, you know, at, at the end of the day, like Checkmate has said, you know, this is a, you know, governance is a bit, is like part of the, the backbone of Decred, right? So the more that everybody knows, the better off the project will be over the long haul, right? So that's what gets me insanely excited about the, uh, the new um, website that they're spinning up. And then um, in terms of my work, you know, I'm just trying to, what, uh, after my first phase, I, I really realized I was like, there's more work to be done here. And what I really want to do is that if I've, I consider my job done, like I said before, is when I realize I've dug deep enough to provide enough information over the various stakeholder groups um, and cross network stuff. Um, and provided that information because, you know, at the end of the day, Decred is being compared to other cryptocurrencies, other monies like the U.S. dollar. And, um, you know, it, that stuff all shows up on chain. So, you know, my goal is just to dive deeper. Um, I've already published two pieces, um, you know, hitting on extra work that, you know, Check had done with his recent piece on the realized cap. Um, one that compares uh, Decred's MVRV ratio and its uh, prints versus Bitcoins. And then another one that actually focuses on the impact of the ticket pool and the realized cap. And, you know, um, the rest of my work, uh, I think those will be the rest. That, that, I think that's all of my realized cap work for the time being. And I'm this month, I'm doing a lot of heavy uh, mining work. Um, but yeah, you know, just over time, what I really want to do over the rest of this proposal is provide the most amount of analysis for the best bang for the project's buck. Um, because I really do think, um, you know, come another 12 months from now, we're going to be having very different conversations in terms of um, Decred related to price hype. And, you know, hopefully, you know, when that time comes, you know, everyone's educated enough or we at, at a minimum have the resources at their disposal to educate themselves over the project. Right. Because what really matters, you know, Czech, I think, has said this a lot, is that what's interesting about Decred is that maybe it doesn't it hasn't had as much hype historically but it's an incredibly sticky project right like once people fall down the rabbit hole they don't leave um so what we're trying to do is you know even just build up that sticky stickiness with you know my publications checkmates publications richard red's uh publications and the website that's getting spun up as well right so uh as long as uh i my work i think is contributing to that end goal and helping everybody, uh, you know, fall in love the, with the project the same way we have, um, you know, I'll consider, you know, the work I'm doing um, worthwhile. But, you know, I've still got, you know, I based on my budgeting, at least eight months left of work. So, um, but yeah, that was a bit of a tangent, but uh, that's kind of like the uh, quick and dirty update on my uh, proposal. And obviously excited to be uh, contracting uh, once again for Decred. One thing that truly amazed me, and you know, I, I read through your piece on the realized cap. I can't believe how much signal is in the realized cap and all the derivatives of it for Decred. I mean, it, it makes sense when you kind of sit back and think about the the active holding of tickets. But I'm I'm just amazed at the level of signal that is actually in there, and it's and 
I think I said this way, way back on my first podcast, the thing that actually pulled me into Decred um, was I was, you know, heavily into on-chain for, for Bitcoin. And um, it was the, uh, the, the dis- you know, I was scrolling through uh, coin market cap, uh, sorry, not coin, uh, coin metrics, sorry, um, looking at their on-chain metrics. And the thing that, that stuck out to me is Decred's realized cap. It just was different to everything else I'd seen. Um, and now that I've actually gone in and, and distilled out some information, some derivatives from it, it just, I, I was amazed at the signal. And I think you've then, uh, you've then built on that looking at it compared to, uh, to other projects. Um, and even Bitcoin has a, a you know, the realize, um, uh, realize cap has always been an important level, but its signals only occur, you know, once in a generation. Whereas Decred is a perpetual system because it bakes in people's recency bias. So that was that was a really really cool find uh, of mine. It's it, it's one of the highlights so far of just finding something that really does carry genuine signal um, that can actually be you know that signal can be transported into all sorts of other momentum indicators and gradient indicators and things like that. So it was good to see you expand on that into a you know new new and different fields. Yeah, the the realize cap is a unique beast for Decred. Um, you know, it's basically the line in the sand, right? Because it, it basically takes into account, you know, at the end of the day, when somebody moves their coins, what it really comes down to, what you're looking at is opportunity cost. Like whenever you move the coins, you're thinking, I could potentially lose these coins. It's going to cost me a fee, right? So it's a very, very um, explicit intent filled move, right? It's not one of those things that you just move casually, right? So when your coins are moving, you're sending a high signal. And with Decred, just because the hodlers coins are constantly on the move via the ticket pool, you're getting that feedback very, you're, you know, in droves, you're getting it a lot, you're getting it very frequently. So it makes a ton of sense that, you know, that that opportunity cost line, um, you know, is just so high signal for Decred. And, you know, just in general, check, I mean, I'm sure you agree with me on this, just there's something just incredibly unique about the chain, you know, like even the fact, you know, when I, uh, when I put together that block times piece um, called the mining pulse, um, the, how responsive, you know, because Decred's difficulty retargets every 144 blocks, it even makes the mining side um, incredibly uh, responsive. So just overall Decred's a unique beast when it comes to on-chain prints. And, you know, it, you know, I think check would also agree with me on this as well is that, you know, that stuff, could be a quote unquote a leading indicator for moneyness in the future, um, and you know that's the type that gets type of stuff that gets me really excited. I mean, Angela, I, I remember we were just literally talking right before the pod. Um, we we're talking about like trading stuff, and you're like, "What have you been doing this week?" I was like, "I'm, I'm back to the on chain." You're like, "Dude, you love that stuff." I was like, "Yeah." I mean, it. I, I can't stop thinking about it just because Decred is a. Uh, it, it's just it's just unique and it's so underexplored, um, and it really excites me. So, um, yeah. Interesting. Well, gentlemen, you know, we like to keep it short for the BCR roundups. I appreciate you guys for coming on. You guys got any closing thoughts before we break out? I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited to, uh, you know, to see where Decred goes. I know that um, there's a lot of, you know, large releases that are in the pipeline. Uh, I'm, I'm really keen to see the decks get spun up and, you know, see people trading away on there. And to, to be honest, I'm just fascinated by how the technology works. So, I, I, I'm really excited to open first lightning channels. I'm excited to get first mixing going. Uh, I'm excited to try out the decks. There's so many layers to, to what's coming through the pipeline. Um, and, you know, to be honest, uh, the thing that excites me the most, we saw Marco's tweet where he said, uh, guess what I've got coming up next. Um, I am really excited to see what he's got coming up next. So, uh, you know, what Decred's coming out with on the technology front is, uh, to be honest, it's, it's cutting edge world class. So, um, there's, there's not much you can't be excited about on that front. Yeah, I, I am, uh, by the, uh, the Twitter handle permable Nino, I am always bullish and always bullish on Decred. So, you know, uh, you know, everything just excites me about Decred. I think all, all the mechanics, everything is incredibly sound. All the pieces are in place. I think, uh, uh, we're in a unique space and, um, I, I'm excited for the future. So, you know, I think check hit the nail on the head though. So I'll, I'll let, I'll let the, the listeners uh, tune out with that. <laughs> I think if there's one thing that I can kind of leave people with, um, it would be that there's, there's, a, there's more discussions and things going on, on, uh, on Reddit every Friday, we're doing a forward thinking Friday. The idea is to talk about, you know, um, constructive elements, what we want to see in Decred thinking, you know, thinking into the future, going as wild as we can to kind of get all the crazy ideas out and then, you know, distill them down 
Um, we've had a session looking at different narratives and, and, and just trying to help people discuss and talk and have that community uh, element. And it's had fairly good engagement. Um, and then the other one is on Sundays, we're doing a Skepticism Sunday, which is a concept borrowed from the Monero community, um, looking at, you know, let, let's unpick where the faults are, where are the flaws, where are the challenges, and then look for constructive solutions on how we can actually fix that. And, you know, what I'm really excited to see is, is more people kind of um, coming on board, seeing things that they can actually have a hand in solving, um, and then, you know, getting engaged in that way. So, so far, we've got a really, really good response from people in there and discussing and um, coming up with ideas. Um, and then the next step is to start finding people who can, you know, start pushing some of these ideas forward or, you know, someone who knows a guy who knows a guy that, you know, has, has done work like this in the past. So um, I'm really excited by that. And I think that the uh, that community building element has really got some momentum. Um, and I want to give one last shout out to all of the uh, the artists that are putting out, you know, all the various graphics on, on socials. I think that's that's really, really exciting. It's immensely valuable for the project. Um, so I just want to kind of commend you all on, on that work. That's, that's really good to see. Well, well, thank you, gentlemen. And, and I'll catch you guys on RC. Cheers. All right. Sounds good. Thanks.